How's everybody doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously, as I said to you the other day, you know, we've been talking, I'm going back to during the season and just making sure we were on the same page. Um, I have a lot of respect for Craig and the way he's, not just the career he's had, but the way he handles himself professionally. I think he had a big influence um, in our locker room in terms of um, being a player that's done a lot in this league, but also being a player that gets up every day and um, works to get better and takes care of himself. And, you know, you look at our young team, but especially our young decor, and, you know, I do think it's very important to have um, someone that there's some stability in terms of the presence and what he brings, and I think he had a big influence on that decor. So excited to have him back. Um, it says a lot about um, Craig and his family and also – how he feels about the coaching staff, the players, the organization, because, you know, I don't know if uh, this time last year, if he thought maybe um, this could be one year, but I think he had fun and he sees something special building. Um, and actually even said to me, you know, in, in all my years of playing, um, I don't know if I've, if I've enjoyed myself more than I did last year. So, um, yeah, we're excited. And now we'll just keep working uh, on what's next. I know you Well, I don't think there was ever um, in my conversations with him a sense that he was um, waffling as much as he just wanted to make sure that he felt that he could perform at the level that he, he wants to perform at. So he wanted to take a little bit of time. He wanted to decompress from the season, spend the time with his family, and then just be honest with himself about his, where his body's at. And even just as recent as a couple of days ago, he said this is as good as he's felt in a long time, he's training hard. He feels he feels ready to go, um, and so I think someone with his experience had to get through a lot of the personal and the family things first, and then get to you know having an honest evaluation about did he feel um, physically that he could perform at the level that he needs uh, that he wants to perform at. So I wanted to be respectful of all that and be have honest conversations back and forth, with, which is what we did, and um, you know got the call from him. Uh, uh, just recently that he was ready to move forward. So. How much, when you look at goaltending, you have UPL, how much are you still looking for other goalies, or what is UPL's role in all of this? Well, we're going to, you know, it doesn't change in anything in terms of the conversations that we're having right now and looking at different options. Um, as I've said to you guys before, I think that, you know, we have to be in on every conversation. We have to be open to every possible scenario, which we are. And... You know, you look at some of the uh, potential um, trade partners around the league, or if you look at some of the um, goalies that could be on the market, you know, they come at a high price. And maybe right now for us, that's something we're going to have conversations about, but may not be quite what we're comfortable doing. They might be looking for a player um, or a player and a top prospect that we're not comfortable moving. And that doesn't mean we don't like the goalie or want to make a move for that particular goalie, but it just means that we're not willing to compromise and, and pay the price that might be needed. So we're going to continue to have those conversations. We're going to look at all those things, um, but we're going to do what we think is right for our team and our organization now, balancing the future and the long term and, and everything like that. So the other piece of your question is UPL, and I've said all along, I really feel strongly that he's going to be a very good goalie for us. You know, he's... Uh, he showed when he came up last year that he was composed. He was um, he had a presence in that. He was giving us a chance to to win hockey games just by being um, stabilizing force back there in, in the NHL games. Uh, I liked the way he fought through different things in the American Hockey League last year, and even in terms of you know a goal might go in he didn't like. He didn't he didn't get small and you know um, look defeated. He actually got a presence about him. I'm going to stop the next puck, and I think that's a maturation that I wanted to see out of him. Um, but he's had some bat battled some injuries over the couple of years. You'd like to see him have some more games um, to this point, but um, we believe in him. That's, that's the, what I was going to bring up, Kevin. It's just as, as well as, as the flashes that UPL has shown, and as well as Craig played when he was healthy. Both have a bit of a history. I mean, Craig's old, um, old, young. By my <laughs> um, but you better not say that to him when he gets here. I mean, careful. <laughs> Don't want to 
want to get caught in the same goalie situation of the carousel that you had last year? Yeah, I mean, for sure you look at everything. Um, I think we're understanding and we're realistic. You look at Craig Anderson, um, I don't think – going into this, any of us were expecting, okay, he's going to play 60 games. You know, that's um, not anything that we've, that we've talked about or looked at. Um, but what we've had, had honest conversations back and forth was, how do you feel and where are you physically? And, you know, we also have to trust, um, you know, what Craig's telling us and how he feels and how he feels his body is and preparing. So you look at that. Um, can you plan for the amount of injuries that happened last year is challenging. Can you predict the future and say that, you know, the types of things that we went through? No, you want to put yourself in the best position you can. Um, you make the best decisions you can. You try to prepare for scenarios where you may end up being in that situation. But, um, you know, it, at one time last year when you're on kind of number five and six, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's tough, but, um, that's where I go back to. I know I've answered this question before. What can you control versus what you can control, especially on the injury front? And that's a challenge. But, you know, certainly we understand and we look at all of that as we put this together. Is Dustin potentially still in the season? Yeah, I've, sp I've spent some time with uh, him at the end of the season and his agent um, as recently as in a few days ago and just, you know, made sure that he knew that we're working on all of this. We're working and how we're putting the pieces together we we do see that he is a guy that we know we're going to get one we know he's very um even before two years ago when i go back to before he came up to buffalo he was he was a very positive influence on in rochester when he was there so um you know definitely a conversation we're still having as we kind of move forward here kevin how tough is it to stay patient during this process when you have so many young goaltenders that and it seems like goaltender right now is almost one of the missing pieces to making this team a playoff contender. And how difficult is it to stay patient with Levi Portillo and some of those guys, especially in UPL waiting for his role? Well, I, I guess you know, maybe I look at it a little differently. Um, I get excited about it. You know, I, I really feel strongly um, a player like Devin Levi um, – is is, has, is going to have a chance to, to to be a really good goaltender in the National Hockey League. Yeah, you know, I've watched him quite a bit dating back to before we made the trade, and then watching him this this year. Not just the way he handles himself on the ice, but his um, maturity and his self awareness and evaluation of his own game and what he works on, and you know, just very impressive. So I get excited. Sure, like you want everything right now and you want that to happen. But um, the one thing I do know is, is you have to be patient in terms of committing to the plan, um, sticking with it, um, understanding that, you know, there is a development process that you need to go through and you, and you can't rush that. So um, that's something we talk a lot about, but um, patience is, is important, um, but we're going to do everything we can to win hockey games. We know that we want to help our players get better we want our focus, Donnie uh, Granato, and I just talked about this yesterday. You know, our focus as we look at our team right now is we have a lot of really good hockey players that we think can get better. So we need to focus on those players. How do we get them better? How do we continue to put them in a position where they're going to they're going to push and improve? Because um, that's a big part of how we're going to take a step. So we want to we want to win hockey games. We want to develop our players, and we want to make sure that we're you know rounding it out to give ourselves the best chance to keep getting better and improve. Well, I can tell you this, Mike, I won't have like 50 note cards that like in front of me so that people could see your cameras can see because I could, uh, you know, when you're up in the war room, you can you can hide it a little bit. So that will change. Um, I, you know, I, I'm really looking forward to it because I've, I've always felt like this. Um, yeah, yeah, it was, he's got to buy you guys a beer later. Um, I there's nothing replaces communication back and forth in person i ain't like nothing so for me to to look over the table and to be able to walk over and have a conversation there's nothing better than that so i'm excited for that um i'm also just excited for having all of our staff together and you know jerry and his staff the amount of work these guys do throughout the year um is is a, is a ton and they have everybody come together and hear the name that we call and names that we call be able to 
be part of that and shake hands. I just think that's a that's a big part of this job. So I'm excited for them for that reason as well. And, you know, I don't know if it's because of the pandemic, but um, I think in the last month, there's not a person in the hockey world that I have run into that didn't say I'll see you in Montreal. So I, I don't know if they're going to have enough hotel rooms in Montreal to fit everybody, but I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I'll give you my answer, and, you know, Jerry can chime in as well. But, you know, when you look at last year, um, we felt we got really good value with the picks where we took the players. You certainly take into account some of the unknowns. Um, you know, obviously the world's changed a little bit since a year ago even. Um, but what we've talked about and we've asked our staff to do is let's evaluate them as hockey players first. Let's put our list together. Let's not worry about where players are from. Let's put our, together our list, and then we can put a little asterisk. We can, you know, look at it and have the conversation. Um, you know, in terms of how we kind of move forward on that, you know, we'll see. What we will be open to is if we get to a spot in the draft where we feel that um, there's real value there, we're, then we're gonna then we're gonna talk about that. So we're open to that. Um, as you know, we have signed Kisikoff. We're working on processing all that. Hopefully, um, you guys are able to see him at development camp, and if not, um, hopefully he's here by you know training camp. So um, we're gonna we're gonna do the best we can. Everybody's dealing with it. Um, we're certainly mindful of it, but uh, I guess that's that's the way I look at it. But yeah, Jerry, go ahead. Yeah, I'll get outside my realm a little bit. He mentioned Kisikov. So just to close off last year's class of the four Russians, he's under contract. Um, Sardarian is going to be playing at UNH next year. So that's a very positive development and was part of our excitement with um, Sardarian and that development path for him. And then the other two, Novikov and Poltapov, were still extremely high on as players. Uh, but we knew, you know, with all these players, it would be, you know, a two or three year process like any player, you know, taken maybe outside of the top three or four in the draft. You're going to wait a few years on these players. So that, that's been a very positive experience from my perspective with that draft class and taking the four Russians, which were obviously, a, you know, was a big story last year. And, you know, we'll do the same thing this year. As Kevin said, we've rated all the players. We have them um, at a spot on our list um, as we would always have them. And then at some point we, we've had a lot of discussions already um, but we'll have to make a decision on where to take them and where we think, um, you know, they become, they become a high-value pick for us. You know, the one thing I would add just quickly on the Russian, I want to make a point, too. Uh, you know, our Russian scout's done a tremendous job, Ruslan, and uh, he's actually integrated into our player development um, in some ways, you know, working as translator, setting up, um, you know, Zoom calls, with our player development staff, you know, the, just to make sure that we're communicating and we're talking about what Buffalo is all about, what our organization is all about. And, you know, Adam Mayer and his staff have done a really nice job there. So I, that's part of it, too. Sometimes the communication, even if you don't speak the language, is critical just to make sure those players understand what we're all about here. And ultimately, like Jerry said, you know, it's not a rush. It's that we think we have really good talent in those names that we called, and we look forward to whenever that time is that they can join us. Yeah, and I think our staff's done a great job, a, a little bit um, more so this year. You know, Ruslan, Frank Musil, Anders Forsberg, myself, Jason Nightingale, getting over and seeing a lot of the Russians this year in person uh, in various tournaments and settings this year. Uh, but obviously Ruslan and, and Frank the most. Uh, so notwithstanding the fact that there were some challenges, you know, with the World Juniors being canceled, the Russians not uh, coming to play in the under-18 tournament, not being at the combine, I mean, we do have to factor some of that in. We just haven't had as much access as you would have had to some of these players three years ago. Uh, but we have had a lot of live viewings uh, of them this year. No, I honestly, Paul, I, I think it's a tricky question because um, you can change you know, year to year. Uh, we think they're, they're both very good prospects. I mean, you look at Devin Levi, 
um, winning the Richter Award, the top goalie in college hockey. Um, and, I, and I'll reiterate what I said earlier. I love the fact that he went, went back to school purposefully to feel the pressure of, of having won that award, being the top goaltender in the country and, and having the expectations. He wanted that feeling, that pressure. I think it says a lot about him and the maturity. Um, Eric is, uh, is a goaltender that played on one of the top teams in the country, um, gave them a chance to win every night. And, you know, he's, he's I mean, you look at two years ago, didn't, didn't get a lot of games and then took over the net and played almost every minute. So, um, honestly, both of them are really good prospects. So, um, but we also know that you, you just have to stay the course, you know, and, and let them develop on their own time. Um, we do it the same every year and you know we we spend a lot of time it doesn't matter where we are on our list um, we spend an awful lot of time getting the players in order on our list and uh, the reason we do that is we're going to stick with that list um, certainly through you know the the first three four five rounds I would think um, now it is unique this year um, in that we have a lot of draft capital with the three first round picks and the 11 picks total. So in any year, and it happened last year, something can change a day or two before the draft and you end up with an extra pick or end up in a slot that you weren't ever anticipating you were going to be in picking. So uh, the last thing you want to do is to be caught off guard and not be prepared to take a pick at a, a certain range in the first, second or third round. So. We've spent just as much time, you know, looking at one, two, and three as we did last year when we were picking one. Jerry, what kind of just, you know, you talk to people and they, once you get, past, like Mike was saying, once you get past those first four, no one seems to have a handle on the order. Like, what, what kind of draft is it once you get past those first few guys, I guess? I think it's a very good draft. Um, I think we're going to get a really good player at nine if we pick at nine. Um, I, I get that question a lot that um, uh, there might not be a consensus, you know, once you get past the top three. I, I have a different view of that myself, actually. Um, and we may get surprised and we're, we're planning for that. But I, I actually think the top six or seven, you, you can almost check them right off. I, I do believe that. Um, but I do think, you know, there's a group right after that that, you know, there's a chance you're getting – just a good, as good a player at nine as you're getting at four or five. So we're, we're really excited about a group of players in that range. Um, if you ever get higher in the draft, that's, you know, that's a great thing to do from my perspective. It takes some of the risk out of it, I guess. Uh, but I think, I think it's pretty deep, right down to you know, uh, 20, 25, 30 on our list. I think it's a really good draft. No, we do have it. Uh, Sam Ventura, his group, um, has that. And what's funny about it is um, every team has their own, <laughs> so they might not agree with you. Um, but you know, we're you know, go back to a couple drafts ago where we were able to to get JJ Paterka. Um, you know, we were going through pick after pick after pick to try to find a way to to, to move up to get JJ. Um, that wasn't easy, but you know you went off the formula as you, as you mentioned. So no, we do have that, and um, you know that's what we use. And that's that's the in each general manager you talk to in those situations says, okay, I need to talk to the numbers guy because they got that in front of them. So um, no, we for sure do. Kevin, with the depth of that draft, having those three picks, what are the challenges of you like a guy at nine? Maybe he'll be available at sixteen. You don't want to reach for somebody that may be available at sixteen. You don't know who's going to fall. I mean, what are some of those challenges in, when you're sitting at that spot and, and, and trying to figure out where to go with each of those picks, especially considering how you know unpredictable it is? Yeah, that's – I mean, you nailed it. That's – you know, to some extent, that's the art of the draft, right? And that's why you spend so much time beforehand doing the work because what you can't do is um, in those three minutes – 
try to figure that out. It has to be sorted out before. And it, I mean, we have spent a lot of hours um, just in our room upstairs with our scouts and big groups. And that's why, as Jerry mentioned, sorting out your list is so critical because you're right at, at nine, um, you're going to look at your list and you're going to say, man, we got these three players. We really like all of them, but you can only call one name and you, you, you have to make that decision. But that goes back to if you've done the work before and you're prepared for that, um, you move forward. And then, you know, balancing who could be there at 16, that's where I, I really lean on these guys and I ask a lot of questions. You know, what are the chances? Why do you think that? Um, where do you see this moving from, from our pick nine to 16? What is this group of players? So um, I feel I sleep well when I know that the work's been done and I, and, I, and I trust Jerry and his staff and that the work has been done. We've had a lot of conversations. We're going to continue to have more. You know, we have a few more days here leading up to the draft that we'll work, continue to work through things. But um, as long as we feel confident and work together when we you know, walk onto the draft floor, um, then, we'll be, then we'll be comfortable making those picks. Do you think this is going to get crazier simply because all you guys are there and you can walk to the table behind you? And I mean, you guys haven't been together for three years. Now you're all going to be on the same floor. Does that just maybe up everything this year? Uh, well, I do think it, it leads to opportunity. Um, you know, what I have learned over the last couple of years is the majority of things that ultimately will play out on draft day uh, have been worked on for a while. Um, so if I'll go back for weeks now. There's been conversations going on um, with with every team, and you're talking about you know things that they're looking for. What are we trying to do? Um, and as you get closer, you know that you're building on those conversations, building so they don't just come together. Um, ultimately, then you know, just within minutes, it's it's weeks and months sometimes but leading up to it. Time. Well, it could, but I guess what I'm saying is you have those conversations previous and then you walk over the table and maybe that's how it, you know you get it to come together. So I think to your point, it, there's more opportunity for that. Um, but that's why it's so critical to do the work before and to be in those conversations before just so you're ready. Because I guess my thought is obviously if you chalk it out, everyone says Montreal's going to take Shane Wright or whatever. Well, everything could go a little haywire if that doesn't happen. I mean, if the devil suddenly want to trade number two, and I mean, so that could a lot more chaos. Absolutely. Yeah. No, you're 100% right. And you were open to that, by the way. You know, we've we've talked about this is what's exciting for us going into a draft with having the, the capital we do, um, having conversations with the teams ahead of us. You know, what are they looking to do? Having conversations with the teams behind us. We, we've been doing that. We're open to both. And um, ultimately, you know, when you're going to finalize a deal like that then it's how's the draft order gone you know because we might be willing to do something or another team might be willing to do something but it's only if certain players available so that's that's part of it too and which none of us will know until next thursday kevin you had a good young player in samuelson who couldn't finish this season is, is this ankle injury going to hurt his summer workouts and that type of thing did he have to have any surgery or can he start working out yet or what what's his plan now moving forward is it going to hinder him no, he's good. He's good to go. Um, I talked to him last week, and he's he's been training hard. You know, we'll have him here for development camp, and you know, probably be on the ice, and we'll see. You know, he was dealing with one of those things that really he was feeling good by the time the Rochester season was going, but you know, when you're when he was pushing off, he was feeling it, you know, into the bone a little bit. So it just we just trying to be really smart and really careful with him. But um, he told me as of last week that he's been feeling really good. He's been going hard in the weight room and running and all the stuff that he needs to do. So, you know, we're not concerned. Have you talked about it? Like, did you talk about moving up, moving back? I mean, all those options are open. When you look at where this team is at, um, are you at the point where you can spur, where it's time to start spurring this? Uh, with, with, the, with, the, with the actual player, I mean, with, with actual talent to add to this roster. Yeah, I mean, I think what the way I look at that is definitely want to be open in having those conversations, but I don't want to do something like that if we think we're just fast forwarding in the short term. It has to make sense for us in the, in the longer term as well. And I, I, I would use like last year, use Colorado as an example. You know, they go out and they make a move, um, you get Kemper. Uh, and they looked and saw where their team was, and they made that decision, and, and boom, and, you know, they won the Stanley Cup. But 
now you have to balance where is your current roster, where is your team, how close are you to, you know, that, in them they're an extreme case. They were, you know, feeling like they're knocking on the door to win a Stanley Cup, which they did, you know. So you balance those things. And I, I guess what I would say to that is I'm, we're open, we want to be in those conversations, but we can't do something just to hit fast forward and, and that we feel could, you know, compromise ultimately, you know, our plan moving forward. Well, well, I mean, you know, first of all, you know, be be respectful to. I want to be respectful to Pagula family, and um, you know, she's continuing to to progress. Like we said the other day, um, we're all thinking about Kim. She means she means the world um, to us. Is 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 a human being in our organization. Um, from her role. Um, you know, there's great people in this organization that, that are leading their areas. Um, we're going to continue to work together, um, help each other, and ultimately, this is this is the Pagulas. This is the Pagulas organization. You know, they're as always. They're going to have the final say on on all decisions, from hockey to business, and that's the way it should be. So nothing's changed in that respect. But I know, sitting here, I feel good about the people in this organization that lead their departments on the business side, and we're all going to work together to, to help this along. Uh, do you expect more 19-year-olds to go this, this draft, just based on how things have been the last couple of years? Yeah, and I think I got this question last year, too. It, I mean, it's been a trend anyway um, the last three or four years. Um, and, you know, obviously with some of the players, you know, playing abbreviated seasons last year and in the case of the OHL players, you know, no season, uh, there certainly have been some players this year that have popped um, that maybe people uh, weren't expecting to pop or, you know, thought maybe they missed out on last year. So I, I do expect when you get to the, you know, the, the later rounds, you see more of those players go that maybe missed the season the year before or only played a handful of games. Um, you, you still have to balance that, you know, with the rest of the draft class and what the development path is for the 19-year-old versus the 18-year-old. But I would, I would think there'd be an uptick in that a little bit. In development camp, just for guys, with some of your NHL guys who have never been at development camp, yeah, everybody's going to be there. Um, everybody that's eligible <laughs> that we're allowed to have there, we're going to have. And you know, it's it's a it's a great question, Mike, because it's um, every team does it handles it differently. Um, what we talk to our players about, and I've called all those players, the Krebs and um, Samuelson would be you know just two easy examples. But you know, put Quinn and Paterka and Owen Power in that as well. Um, that from a culture standpoint amongst the young players they're leaders these guys these guys are leaders they've played national hockey league games um and these are going to be people that are going to be um in this organization for a long time and you know we want that culture where these guys are all getting together so for me development camp is really exciting because it brings the new players in that haven't maybe even been to buffalo before um they get to learn about the organization they get to meet people how we do things and then you bring in some of those players. It's funny calling them veterans. They kind of are veterans among young players, but um, those veteran type young players that I think have a big impact. So we're going to have them here. And like I said, I, it's less about the on ice. Um, you know, it'll be more skill based and focused on development, but I'm more about having those players together and, and growing together. And that, that to me is exciting.